Hello friends, I am Pooja Mathur and I welcome all the viewers in our YouTube channel Soma's Evolution Classes. In this video, you will learn the various parental routes of drug administration. So, the parental route is the fastest and the second commonest route of drug administration. This term is made up of two words, par meaning beyond and enteral meaning intestine. Therefore, parenteral drug administration refers to drugs given by roots other than the digestive tract. Parenteral drug administration of drug can be given by injections, infusions or implants and typical goal is to achieve rapid systemic effects. One of the advantage of parental route of drug administration by this route is specially chosen for drug that have poor absorption in the gastrointestinal tract and other drug like insulin and heparin which are unstable in the GIT. In today's healthcare scenario, the key component of therapy for hospitalized patient is parental products. Now moving on the next slide, the most important Frequent use parental roots are intravenous root, intramuscular root, subcutaneous root and intradermal root of administration. There is another category of the root which are known as specialized parental roots of administration which comprises intraspinal roots, intraarterial root, intracerebroventricular root, intracardiac root, intraatricular root, intralymphatic root intraosseous root and intraperitoneal root. So, we will be discussing one by one all the roots. So, first of all in IV roots, intravenous root involves the induction of drug solution directly into the blood vein using a syringe through a needle or a needleless port on an existing IV lines. It is the best way to deliver dose rapidly and accurately as the drug enters directly into the systemic circulation without any delay in absorption process and achieving its therapeutic effect faster than other route. This route represents the bioavailability of 100% since the pharmaceutical active ingredient usually reaches the site of action without suffering alteration due to pre-systemic effects. IV route is used to send medication directly into the veins using a needle at a 25 degree angle. The intramuscular route of drug administration is a common route for parenteral injection. Many antibiotics, preoperative sedatives and narcotics are administered intramuscularly. In intramuscular injections, the medication is deposited deep into the muscle mass past the dermis and subcutaneous tissue and into the very deepest layer of the muscle where the rich blood supply allow for rapid and full absorption. The muscles also contain large blood vessels and nerves so it is important to place the needle correctly to avoid damage to these structures. Intramuscular injections are administered at a 90 degree angle with a 22 to 25 gauge needle. So next route for the discussion is subcutaneous route of drug administration which is also called as hypodermic administration. This route involves injecting a drug into the loose connective tissue of the skin and it is usually performed on external side of the arm and thigh and on the anterior face of the abdomen. Subcutaneous root injections are administered at a 45 degree angle with a 25 to 26 gauge needle. In lean and obese patient, the injections should be administered closer to the 90 degree angle. Now, I am going to discuss about the intradermal route. This route involves administration of drugs within the skin at the dermis level, generally in the ventral zone of the forearm. Due to extremely low blood supply to the dermis, intradermic Administration implies almost null systemic absorption of the drug. It is usually used for vaccines and for local anesthesia as well as for diagnosis purpose in hypersensitivity test. Intradermal injections are administered at 10 to 15 degree angle. 
Now, I will discuss about the other routes which are also known as specialized parental route of administration. So, first route in this category is intraspinal route which involve administration of drug within the vertebral column. The two most frequent route for the intraspinal drug delivery are epidural and intrathecal. Next route is intraarterial route. This route involves direct administration to an artery which is generally for the local effects over the irrigated organs. It is also useful for the administration of vasodilators in arterial embolism and contract media for arteriography. Next route I am going to discuss here is the intracerebroventricular route. This route involves direct administration to the cerebral ventricles. This route bypasses the blood brain barrier and other mechanism that limit drug distribution into the brain allowing high drug concentration to enter the central compartment. Intracardiac route of drug administration is used only when there is an emergency during the cardiac arrest due to the serious injuries that may be caused by the needle. It involves direct administration of drug into the heart. Now, the next specialized parental route is intraarticular route. This route involves direct administration on a joint generally for local effect. For example, anti-inflammatory corticosteroids for arthritis. In intralymphatic route, drug administered into the lymph node or a vessel and this route is used for the administration of stem cell during the treatment of autoimmune diseases, anti-tumoral therapy and for the diagnosis purpose. So, the next route in this category is intraosseous route. The route involves the administration of drug into the marrow of the bone. It can safely be used to administer by intravenous drug or fluid required during pediatric resuscitation since the vascular bed of these bones quickly transport the drug to the rest of the body. The onset of action of this route and drug levels are comparable to those achieved when drugs are given by intravenous route because intravenous uh, route is having the 100% bioavailability. In the intraperitoneal route, the injection is given in the peritoneal space leading to a high absorption rate credited to the available large surface area. This route may cause infections in the peritoneal cavity and is painful and risky. So, coming to the next slide, now you all will uh, be going to learn about the various advantages of the parental route. So, the first advantage is this route of drug administration is the choice for drug that have poor absorption for the GID and drug like insulin which are unstable in the gastrointestinal tract. The next advantage of this route could be used unconscious, uncooperative and vomiting patient on under circumstances that require rapid onset of action. The next most important advantage of this route is the bioavailability is very faster, is 100% and more predictable. And the interference by liver metabolism is also avoided by parental route of administration. There is no chance of interference by food or digestive enzymes in case of parental routes. So, the next slide is about uh, the disadvantages which are related with the, this route of parental route. And the first disadvantages which is uh, associated by the parental route is the drug administration by these route is irreversible and poses more risk than the other routes. The next disadvantage is it is an invasive route of drug administration and thus it can cause fear, pain, tissue damage and infections. Another disadvantage is inf injections have limitations for the delivery of protein products, particularly those that require sustained level. Professionally skilled person is required to administer parental to the patients. Well, that was the brief explanation of parental route of drug administration. I hope you learn a lot from this video. Please do like and subscribe this channel SOMAS Evolution Classes and for more interesting videos stay tuned with us. Thank you so much.